Reina, are you ready? I am ready. All right, let's do this. We got Laura Briner all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. Christmas season is upon us. How are you doing today, Laura? I am great. How about you? I'm feeling so festive. We are so excited to have you and your theme song and, and promoting that today with also your children's book that's coming out. Uh, but really quick, I want to let our audience know a little bit about your, yourself and your story. So if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about where you're from, your musical influences, and, and if you had music, if it was that you know important growing up. You know, I am from the uh, Maryland, Washington, D.C. area, little town called Mount Airy, or I sometimes call it Mount Scary because you turn left at the cow, right at the church, you keep on going directions. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm from the middle of nowhere, and I have always loved music. Music was always in our house. We, uh, my parents have a jukebox that we would dance to. We would dance and sing to the oldies but goodies. And, and my sisters and I, we just thought we were the greatest things going. And so we would charge my parents, I think it was like 25 cents a show. <laughs> and um, they saw the show probably three or four times a day. My parents were like, Oh my gosh, we have to watch another show. I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, so it's always been in my blood. I love music. I, I love country music always. It's always been in my heart. Uh, I love the melodies. I love the lyrics. It's about real life. And 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 I've really gotten into songwriting too. And and I, I love, to me, my dad always would say, you know, Laura, you really can't sing about something unless you've been through it. And he's like, of course, I never want you to feel heartache or I never want you to feel uh, pain in any way, but you can't sing a bluesy country song without having felt it, that kind of thing. So uh, I'm all about the lyrics, the melody, and and I, I love collaborating with other people. So to me, it's I don't usually write by myself. I love being with other people and, and bouncing ideas off of one another. And and uh, I have always been a part of music. I I always want to know. I, I've always wanted to learn and and know and and grow. And because I think you know what, when you're not growing or you're not learning, what's it all about then? You know. So uh, you know, there's so much about this business. There's the business stuff to it too. And I love to do dance. I love singing. I, you know, I've gotten somewhat into the acting and the hosting and radio and TV. And so you never know when you concoct this dream up in your mind as a child, like, you know, you're like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to sing and I'm going to do this. And you're like, oh, but it's, it's like a tree. There's so many branches off of it. And there's so many different things that can be a part of this dream. So yeah, she's my little prop. I'm like, hi. <laughs> um, but from there, I, from Maryland, I did a lot of uh, musical theater and, and performed in Washington, D.C. at the Kennedy Center. To, I went to school in Philly and, and, and did different shows and recordings there. I got into voiceover stuff and, again, some musical theater off-Broadway and moved to Nashville to pursue the dream. And, and I've been splitting my time back and forth with, in between Nashville and L.A. And, you know, there's so just so many different parts to the career, to the dream. And so, to me, it's been it's been exciting and, you know, I've been recording and gotten into dance music too. And, and yes. definitely found my way back to country. Yeah. I, I wanted to talk about the dance music really quick. So hold on yeah. really, really quick. You have a following. They're called the Briniacs. Is that right? Yeah. right? I, I love they them. are my family. They're amazing. Always so supportive, you know, and to me, it's a group of us that we really developed. It's been developing always, but Really, during the pandemic, we all got really, really close. And my father passed, passed away during, during that time. time. And so, so it was, it was not of COVID from a rare blood cancer. And, you know, it's they helped me through that so much. And they told me, you know, Laura, it's okay not to be okay. There are times that it's just, you know, it's not okay. And, you know, there's moments where I just, you know, I need to fall apart. But then there's times when it's it's a happy thing or happy memories. And, and we accept everybody in our group. We love all, all races, religions sexual preferences, ethnicity. It's a safe place for everybody to come to. Nobody's judging everybody. If somebody's feeling down, we pick them back up. If they're, if they're excited about something, we're that, then all of us are behind you 100%. It's a really great big family. So I'm really, really blessed well, I, to be able to. No, they sound fantastic. And I want to give a shout out to them. I mean, obviously they're yes. huge supporters. So shout out to the Briniacs. But to get back into, into dance music, uh, you got into, you know, into international dance music. I felt like when I was listening to a little bit of it, you had this Sophia Ellis Baxter vibe. You got Body First. Yeah, no, I love it. I, it's right up my alley. So I just, I wanted to see and, and get from you, you know, that 
point when you, you went to that dance music and then you obviously you went back to your roots to start performing country again. What brought you back to country? Well, you know, to me, as an artist, you're always growing. What do I want to say next? What do I want to do? You know? And so I got together with this great producer. I, I love him, Damon Sharp. We're like, we're definitely family. And, and we've been co-writing a lot together too, which is Wish List and Jawbreaker and Body First. And he was like, you know, Laura, I never want to take you out of you, but I want to stretch. I want to I want to challenge you. I want you to stretch. I want to, where can Laura Bryan go? You know, he's like, I'm never taking country out of you because that's you, but let's twist it up. You know, during the pandemic, we saw that genres kind of smushied. I know it's a technical term, but everybody kind of like, nobody's just listening to pop. Nobody's listening to just country or blues. It's everything kind of got mushed together. So there, everybody's influenced by different things. Like I'm influenced by I mean, I never, I wasn't alive when he was around, but Elvis, I love that he just did things his way. He did mm -hmm. country, he did gospel, he did blues, he did pop, he did rock, he did everything. And I love that. And he was so true to himself. And so this was a way for me to just expand and see what, okay, what does Lauren want to say next? And, and what better person to do it with than Damon? I mean, he's been in the dance world for so long and, and, he's, and he's so great. Like he's a DJ, he's an artist. He's a producer, he's a songwriter. So he gets the whole business. He, he's like a one-stop shop. So he's like, hey, Laura, you know, you'll feel this, or it's, you, you might go through this. Or, so it's, it's a great colleague, but best friend to sit there and talk about the business and the ups and downs. And, you know, it's like, he's like a good bra. You know, they're there when you need them. <laughs> when you're feeling low. <laughs> Always so supportive. <laughs> you know what, though? We're, we're going to be waiting for your gospel album. I'm going to wait for that one next. Oh, yeah. Amazing grace. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yes. Well, Laura, I want to know more before we get to into really what you're doing, your special projects. We're going to pull over the white lightning to get into the lightning round. Haven't done that in a while. <laughs> All right, so here we go, okay? So buckle up, Laura. It's going to get bumpy. I'm all about it. Here we go. Okay, here we go. We're pulling over the white lightning. And before we get into the lightning round, we love to promote local businesses, charities. And Laura, you're a, you're very busy into charities and especially children's charities. Yeah, do you have one that you wanted to uh, mention today with us? Absolutely. You know, I, we've got a great show that we're going to do with Vanderbilt Children's Hospital, which, you know, I love kids and and uh, it's giving back and, and we're going to go perform and just put a smile on these kids' faces that are going through some yucky chemos and, and some different, not so, not so much fun all the time, but we want to bring them some fun. Also, I love Child Help. It's a great organization. Um, it's a, it's for child abuse and, and, you know, preventing that. And we want to get in there. We want to end all of that. You know, these kids are our future, wherever they may, may be. I've done a lot with Make-A-Wish to the National Guard Youth Foundation. Kids are our future, you know, it's exactly what Whitney Houston said, and teach them well, let them lead the way. Show them yeah. they've got inside. I mean, they really, they need to dream big and, and get rid of all these yucky diseases and child abuse and, and things like that. Kids need to be kids and, and live life to the fullest and dream just like me. I agree. No, that's a great message, and we're going to promote them. I'm looking, really looking forward to that. And what we wanted to do here with Bandwagon TV, we realized, you know, with inflation going up and utility bills, it's going to be cold. So just, you know, if you are, if you're in those department stores and you're just thinking of it, go get those extra blankets and maybe donate that to your local charity. I know that anything helps, especially with food, clothes, you know, even blankets. So uh, if you get a chance, even things that are people, you know, what that you may may not need anymore. You know what? Somebody needs it. Exactly. So if you do have have extra blankets laying around, you know, go donate, and it's a, it feels good, but it's also it's it's a it's a good thing to help your community, your local community, and everyone's going to need help this winter. So we wanted to mention that. Yeah. But uh, thank you, Laura, for mentioning your charities. We're going to plug those. Um, and here we are. We're going to get into the lightning round. So I hope you're ready. I'm ready. We're bumping along. Okay. Here we go. Now you have. You've, you've toured with these artists or you've opened with these artists and I'll let you explain, but I wanted to ask you, Carrie Underwood or Taylor Swift? Oh, both are great. I, um, let's say, uh, we'll go with Taylor Swift. Now, did you open for her or did you just, uh, did you tour with her? I have opened for both of them. Wow. So they're great. Both of them are great. You know, I, I love both of them are so charitable. That's to me, that's how I become a big fan. 
if you're charitable. I am all about somebody that gives back. No, that's excellent. And they're both, yeah, no, that's, that's awesome for them to, to do that too. So I, that's huge. So I, I wanted to bring that up. I thought that would be a lot of fun to ask you. Now, I wanted to ask you too, obviously, you know, you have a whole range of where your voice can go, but if you could sing one cover song, what song would that be? Uh, at last. Oh, little Etta James. I know it's, oh, and I know it's, oh, it's so overdone. <laughs> but I just love, I'm a sucker for a yummy love song. I just love it. <laughs> Do you got any other yummy love songs? Well, Body First is a very fun, uh, Ooh, fabulous. Yummy. Well, it's funny because when Dave and I set out to write that, I was kind of like, you know, we need something yummy and fuzzy and some great love song. Well, then it turned out to be like a little sexy love song, which, <laughs> but, you know, um, as they go there. But, uh, you know, it's just, I, I love I love romance. I, I'm the one that's always watching a good uh, romantic comedy, all of those. I'm, I'm just like, oh, I want that. I love a castle. I love my stuff. Lots, I mean, we are talking about, you know, romantic comedy season right here with all those Christmas, you know, seasonal holiday movies out there. Oh, yeah. I love them. They're so good. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, you're talking, you know, you just, you're not only a singer, but a songwriter. So I wanted to ask you too, what is more important to you, especially right now, this moment in your career? Is it the lyrics or is it the song, the music? I'm more of a lyric person, but you know, it's funny. Songs come to you in so many different ways. I, I, for me, I spend a lot of time blow drying my hair. Imagine that. Um, so it, uh, <laughs> so usually when I hear, have my head flipped over, there I am with uh thinking of songs I got my notepad there and I'm like oh wait so the notepad's down by my feet and I'm writing down I'm like okay here we go <laughs> like you, I'm more of a lyric person but again I love collaborating with other people because I think that's when the magic happens and everybody puts their thinking cap on and everybody brings something different to the table okay you're doing great Laura last question you're driving now whether you're driving with your parrots or you're driving the big red sled in that outfit but you need a blue <laughs> pilot from coast to coast, musician, dead or alive, who do you got? You know, I, I'd have to say Elvis. Uh, that's my, that's mine. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I mean, he just did it all. He, I, I love that he did it his way. I, like, I love yeah. that that song. Um, a little strange, but it was my parents' wedding song, but whatever. Um, but <laughs> it's a little strange to have as your wedding song. But, um, but I just love that he was a true artist. I never got to see him. Obviously, I wasn't alive, not even close. But I love that he just was true to himself. And he was like, I'm not going to be something that I'm not. I I'm going to stick to being me. Because me is great. And you know, that's the other thing. People can tell when you're not authentic. They know. You know, they know when you're not you. And to me, that's so important in whatever you do in life, whether you sing, you're a painter, you're an electrician, you got to be you. No, I, it's 100%. Well, let me ask you, so you're getting, so yeah, let's just, for, for uh, I want to say shits and giggles, but for, 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 <laughs> for, the, for, the, for the event, you wearing that outfit, you're, you're driving the, the big red sled, Elvis is getting in, you need to play one song. Are you playing your own song? Are you playing one of his? Are you playing your, maybe your, your parents' Uh, wedding song? I mean, which song are you playing for Elvis if he gets in? Oh, well, you know, we could do Jawbreaker because it's a little bit of a sass and attitude, so it would be my song. But then I'd be like, honey, you need to get on this wish list, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, he's on my wish list. <laughs> Jawbreaker it is. I love it. Okay, so this is a great segue because you did great. You did great. That was the lightning round. But I wanted to talk about, you've had the Jawbreaker video out. The song has been out now for a couple months. It's great. Like you just said, it is sassy. The video is well done. I mean, if you will, just really quick before we get into what's going on in Christmas, tell us a little bit about shooting that video. Oh my gosh, that video was so fun. And it's funny, like if I, I always say, if there was one song that I could sing the rest of my life that I felt was me, I would say it's Jawbreaker because I feel like it's the fun, it's the sassy, it's, I feel like it's so me. It's got a little bit of that country, it's got the blues, it's all of uh, everything. And Justin Key from Taillight, sorry, I'm now swinging feathers everywhere. <laughs> um, from Taillight, they're a great production company. He had such a great idea and a vision of taking Roadhouse to Moulin Rouge 
to Coyote Ugly to the actual movie Jawbreaker and smushing them all together. Like, yeah. That's a word smush. Um, but he brought it all together and he, he did exactly that. And he brought this song to life, which I love that people are getting to see different sides of me from Body First to the Jawbreaker and now Wishlist. People are getting to see that there's lots of different facets to who I am. Um, yeah. But yeah, he brought that whole song to life. And you know, who doesn't want to shove a Jawbreaker in someone's mouth? <laughs> <laughs> well, your talents, your talents run deep, and that's and this is exactly the segue I wanted to get into, which was what we're you know promoting today, and and obviously you see one of your parents with you, and you're promoting your new children's I book. The <laughs> yes, it's called the tra uh, Christmas Tradition. If if you could tell us a little bit about the book and and um, just the story behind it. Sure, absolutely. So it's about three of my birds. And how this whole whole thing started was uh, my dad and I drove across country with the birds from Nashville to Los Angeles. I was doing some work out in Los Angeles and I was like, you know, let's do this. It was the best thing I ever did in my whole life. Um, especially now with my dad having passed away. Um, those are memories that you'll, that you'll never forget. And I mean, there we were cracking up. We're going into like, sorry, Marriott residence inn, but we were shoving birds up our shirts because you're not necessarily supposed to have animals in there. We're shoving them up our shirts. Birds are moving underneath like this. Again, different show. Um, but it was definitely one of those things. We're stopping at Dairy Queen, stopping at different gas stations to uh, Amarillo, Texas, where, where the, all the Cadillacs are. We spray yeah. paint our names on there. And it just was a ball of fun. And just sitting there with my dad and, and my birds. And it was just incredible. And, and so th this is a part of a series, like there's Snuggles Goes to Hollywood and Harmony, the little one runs for president of the Birdabon Society. Um, okay, you can't eat my bells. Um, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, so this, uh, this book is, it teaches kids, but it's just not, Christmas is not just about, um, and it's really colorful and fun, but Christmas is not just about getting presents. It's about giving back and helping those less fortunate. And so the, these are actual traditions that we do in my family. Like we bake cookies and we sleep under the tree and, and we do, um, we go sledding and, and, and those kind of things. But we also go and volunteer at, at a homeless shelter. And one of the traditions that I love was my parents always told us, you know, go find a student in your class anonymous without them knowing and you need to find out everything about them and so the night before Christmas it would be like a secret Santa we would go out and we would buy gifts for for the student and their family and we would leave them on the porch knock on the door and run and so the kids thought that Santa came and you know their parents were so grateful and so thoughtful and what you see in this book is the kids get so excited and they're like, oh my gosh, Santa came. And let me find the picture. And here it is in the book where the birds do it. And they run and the father comes to, comes to the door and said, yes, we have so much to be thankful, cooed Papa elated. So, and the little one says, look, Santa came. And so to me, that's what Christmas is all about. Yeah. It's not about gifts and things. It's about putting a smile on somebody else's face who may not be able to and yeah not no, be as beautiful. fortunate yeah no thank you so much laura for sharing that yeah. I, I really wanted to when you know setting up this uh, interview and, and mentioning that it was gonna be part of our christmas special and then you had something already lined up i i think it was only fate that brought us together and i want to promote your book but also promote your new song called wish list and Thanks. Uh, it's also it's already out, but I know you're working. The video is 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 out now, and we'd love to talk about a little bit about the the song too. Yeah, great. It's a, you know it was something. I you know we put out Santa Baby, which is such a fun you know you can again sass fun attitude <laughs> all about that. But wish list to me, Christmas is the big thing in our family. Again, like I said, giving back and helping those less fortunate, and um, you know we. We love being together and how we wrote this song, Damon, it's so funny. I'm traveling with my assistant and I, and we're in the Nashville airport on a, no, we're in the Dallas airport on a layover. And I've got my assistant with a post-it note. And I'm like, Damon, 
what if it goes like this? He's singing to the other songwriter, Eric, we're, and producer too. And we're going back and forth. And it was like, wait, what about this? And, da, 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 and singing in the middle of the airport. And it's just so funny how songs happen and they come together. So it was really, really fun. And along with Michael Carey, who's another producer on it, there's lots of horns. The Waters family, who are legendary, iconic, have sang on everything from Neil Diamond to to any great you think about. They just bring that beautiful, soulful gospel sound. And it just gave that whole throwback feel to Wishlist. And it's really um, a feel good, fun, up tempo. And the, the video is just a ball of fun too. Like again, the guys from Tail Light, Justin, great vision. He just wanted to make it like Christmas blew up everywhere and yeah. just <laughs> looks like it exploded. Oh my God, I had so much snow in my hair. Holy cow. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm just pulling out snow for days. <laughs> well, I, when I'm listening to it, you know, it's, like I said, it's out and it has that old fun Christmas vibe to it. When it you know, like Peggy Lee, uh, those classics. So I just, you know, I wanted to thank you. Just one also, not just having the song available too. So I wanted to, now this is on you, Laura. How one, do we find the book? The song, how do we follow you? How do we listen to all your music? Well, you can check us out on all of our socials. Everything is available there. Um, we are Laura Bryna at laurabryna.com. You can get the book there, as well as Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, TikTok. We got a fun TikTok going on. It's We got some fun videos and things. And, and, uh, and Spotify, please go on and, and uh, stream, stream, stream. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're all over. Please stay connected with us. Please shout out. We, we do respond. It is me and it's a lot of fun. And I, I love keeping connected. Oh my gosh, she's chewing all the bells and my um, stocking. So that's really fun. <laughs> so hopefully um, we won't have holes in the book too at the end. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, we're everywhere. So please, and I can't wait to see everybody out on the road. I've been itching for that. You know, that was the hardest part of the pandemic was not being able to get a hug. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And just being able to connect in person. I love that. You know, whether it's a big stadium or even the bathroom, you know, it just, it's that intimate connection. And I miss that so dearly. And thank you to people like you all at Bandwagon for letting us stay connected. Absolutely. No, thank it's you. Thing. I mean, anybody that wasn't affected by this pandemic is so wrong and, and is lying. I mean, it just was. <laughs> A hard time for everybody and this was you guys are so great to keep us connected and and stay a part of the family so thank you <laughs> well, Laura, thank you and you know unfortunately we we have to let you go on that note <laughs> of all notes that that one but we th we thank you for the book for the fun interview the questions and look at this outfit i mean you know <laughs> not i was not expecting what you went and above um, expectations. So thank you so much for par uh, participating and be a part of this, e this episode. Thank you so much for having us. And I can't wait. <laughs> Laura, before we let you go, is there any way we can get a song from you? Oh, we got a little wish list coming up. Oh, that's what we wanted. All right. Well, here you go. This is Laura Bryna wish list.
dressed up for the occasion In my Christmas pajamas And I'm wrapped up with love There you go, there's Laura Bryna, that's Wish List. And I hope this song, I hope that book, The Christmas Tradition, is on your wish list. Laura, thank you so much for joining us today with Bandwagon. Uh, you know, I wanted to mention too, your, your huge help and a huge inspiration to others, but also our, our heroes abroad and here on our homeland, uh, the military. You do a lot with them. You had a song called Hometown Heroes. Uh, thank you so much for helping them out and supporting our troops. Thank you so much. You're absolutely right. Oh, there's a little doggy. <laughs> but yeah. you know, those those brave men and women, they give their their time, their energy, their lives. Their family gives their time, their energy and, and their lives too, just so that we can live in freedom every day. And I wouldn't be able to come out with wish list, the book, everything, if it wasn't for those amazing men and women. And so thank you for letting us dream and we wish you the happiest and healthiest. Christmas, whatever you whatever you celebrate, and Happy New Year, happy and healthy. And if you're overseas, please return home safe and sound. Yes, absolutely. And I know you do a lot with them, so you might have an event coming up here in the next uh, holiday season. But thank you so much for you know being a part of this episode and being a part of season six. Uh, we loved having you. You were a lot of fun, and you got a lot of things going on. So definitely, our audience, make sure you check Laura Brana out. Thank you so much for having me. Come uh, check it out. <laughs> yes. And if you're ever in Texas, you got to say hello. Amen. Yeehaw. We're, we're coming. Yeah. Oh, perfect. All right. Well, Laura, thank you very much. Maui Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year to you and your family and friends. <laughs> tweet, tweet. <laughs>